Thanks for staying with us. Now, the lockdown has been eased and some people have to go about their daily dealings. Many are concerned about their health, especially with the coronavirus in town. And the key to good health is a strong immune system. Now, if we have a weakened immune system, we are more susceptible to cold, flu and the coronavirus. So the question is, what do we need to do to boost our immune system? And uh, Dr. Nesuchi has joined us via Skype today. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Um, Dr. Nesuchi is not... Um, She's not new to our, our, our platform. She's almost like one of our in-house resource doctors, and she's joined us from the U.S. And um, if, she, if she's there, Dr. Nesoshi, good evening. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Wow. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> our celebrity doctor, how are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Awesome. I hope you are doing well, too. Well, we are, we, are, we are trying to keep up as well. And you're looking absolutely good. Thanks. <laughs> so we, we love that you have not lost your your fashion sense since the coronavirus. <laughs> so tell us, walk us through um, COVID nineteen. The last time you were on the show, I mean, this was when it was barely in Nigeria hmm. when we were having all the conversations, and it seemed like everything you you talked about was Greek, but now mm -hmm. it is here, <laughs> and it has gotten to that stage where truly, truly, what we had predicted about communal spreading and all of that has come to our reality now. That's what is happening. Exactly. So what are the hazards of this community spread? Maybe we should start from there. Yes. So when I initially joined um, your show in about February or so, there were cases that were coming up and surging um, in the U.S., across Europe. And we were still at the point in Nigeria where we were thinking, um, are we going to have cases? What are we going to do if it actually comes into Nigeria? How are we going to protect ourselves? And there was a lot of, um, I guess, misinformation that was going around about the virus. People were kind of um, skeptical initially um, as per if this virus is going to even penetrate Nigeria. And lo and behold, of course, it has. And there's still now, at this point, community spread in Nigeria. Numbers are increasing, and we all need to protect ourselves as best as possible. So we were still talking about measures to try to protect ourselves, including um, mechanisms for hand hygiene and what you need to do if you were going to go out in um, public um, amidst large crowds and whatnot. So right now we're at the point where I understand lockdown um, restrictions are kind of eased um, in Nigeria at this yes, point. Absolutely. So there are more people out and about at this time. So I think right now we need to figure out if you are out there and you are going to be amidst um, the general population to some extent, what are you going to do to protect yourself? So aside from um, the high hand hygiene components of things, we need to figure out the best measures that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis to protect our immunity, to boost our immunity, and make sure that we are um, as healthy as possible so that if we do come in contact with this um, disease source, we're able to effectively and efficiently fight it as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Um, um, when I was doing my research, I found out that there's actually nothing called um, boosting of your immunity what i saw mm. is supporting the immunity so do you think that's true is that statement true is there anything so, you can do yeah okay so our body of various organs that naturally sustain our immunity so i think when most people are saying boosting our immunity we're trying to talk about optimizing your immune system, meaning we're taking those measures that are actually necessary to make sure that our immune systems work the way that they are actually supposed to um, work and function. Okay. There are a lot of things that um, some people do on a day-to-day -day basis that can compromise their immune systems, and it's not allowing them to fight off disease and fight off any insults to the body that come about. So when we're talking about boosting the immune system. 
there's no um, like magic pill or potion that one can take where all of a sudden now, like voila, your immune system is 100% um, uh, fixed, I should say. But there are day-to-day habits that we can all introduce into our lives to make sure that we are able to fight any kind of disease agent or pathogens as best as possible. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I think we'll come into that, those um, habits and all of that much later because we have you throughout the show. There are some myths, or would I call them controversies that are flying all over social media. And you mm -hmm. are a medical doctor. I would like for you to address some of it because um, I saw a write-up on vaccines saying mm -hmm. that the, the, the kind of vaccine that is being created right now for COVID-19 is somewhat linked to um, creating um, GMOs, genified, uh, genetically mutilated, uh, modified organisms, that's the GMO, right? And that prior to now, the kind of vaccines we've had in the past are vaccines that, that fight it through creating your own antibodies. So it was quite confusing for me. I'm so not a medical I doctor, but I need to understand um, what is truly going on in that vaccine space and the myth around or the, the, the conspiracies around the vaccine? Okay. So there are lots of um, conspiracy theories uh, floating around out there in regards to um, vaccinations and vaccines. But the one thing that um, we do need to know about vaccinations, the purpose of them is to help the body um, produce um, antibodies to help protect your um, immune system if you do come in contact with um, a pathogen. Yeah. So um, yeah. with COVID, the vaccinations they're trying to create, they are trying to create um, a vaccination that would afford one immunity against the disease agent. So where we are right with the production of vaccinations, there has not been um, a vaccination um, produced or created to date that we have in order to try to um, protect ourselves um, um, from COVID-19. Right now, the medical community and international community, everyone is in a race to try to see who can come up with an effective and a safe um, vaccination that can help us all protect ourselves um, from it. But we're not even there yet. Um, I think we discussed this um, early on when I first came um, on the show that vaccinations take a while to actually create. So in creating these vaccinations, it usually takes um, somewhere around a year to a year and a half before one can actually come up with um, a vaccination that's both effective and that's both safe. So at this point, what researchers are trying to do are create the most effective, efficient, and safe vaccination out there for the masses. So right now, people are enrolled in um, trials to try to see if some of these vaccines actually are effective and safe for the population. Okay, um, I've heard people talk about, I also believe, I have so much belief in vitamin C. But when I was mm. conducting some kind of research into this topic, I found out that some researchers have said that um, vitamin C really do not think, do not really have what we think they do, that it's more vitamin D and zinc. How true is that? Yeah, I also noted down zinc as well because yeah. how true is that? Part of what people were saying is that to boost your immunity, zinc and vitamin C. I thought it was vitamin C. Yeah. Mm. So there's a lot of um, these um, anecdotal things that you hear about. Take um, vitamin C, take vitamin D, um, take zinc as um, supplements, and that's going to actually help boost um, your immune system. The beautiful thing about the human body, we are all born with the organs that will actually help us sustain our immunity. Um, the bottom line is that for the most part, if you are eating a very well-rounded diet, you are getting all of the actual vitamins that you need for your immune system to work optimally, okay? When we're talking about um, vitamin supplementation, the, only, the reasons that you would need vitamin supplementation is if you are actually low on some of those vitamins. So, for example, in regards to vitamin D, sometimes, you know, when I am um, testing my patients and doing blood work on them, I can find that they are significantly deficient in vitamin D. 
And when you do have the deficiency, that's where it is kind of helpful to um, supplement the body with those vitamins that you are not able to um, obtain on your own. Okay. In regards to um, vitamin C, the um, reason that people have um, spoken about vitamin um, C, because there have been studies in the past that kind of made an association with um, vitamin C helping stave off um, uh, illnesses um, like the common cold. But however, has there been definitive evidence showing that if you take these supplements, vitamin C, um, zinc or vitamin D, that your immune system will be 100% top notch. We don't have that definitive um, scientific evidence at that point. So I think the main takeaway is there really should be this um, focus on um, having a healthy, well-rounded diet so that you can naturally through your food um, get the um, vitamins and the elements that your body needs to actually sustain itself and to work optimally. But while I quite well, agree with you, um, sometimes mm -hmm. in the process of cooking, most of these vitamins mm -hmm. are lost. So what do we do about that? So what you do about that is actually try to incorporate eating fresh fruits and fresh, fresh um, vegetables as well. In regards to cooking, sometimes we do um, overcook our food and then you do lose some of the um, nutrients in the food. So I understand um, where you're coming from when you're saying with cooking, um, they may be lost. But that's what we talk about when we say have a well-rounded um, diet. So obviously, in addition to eating the um, cooked, the home-cooked um, nutritious food, you should also try to eat um, whole foods. You should also try to eat fresh foods, fresh fruits, um, fresh vegetables. Therefore, you can maintain the integrity of those fruits and vegetables and get the maximal amount of nutrients that um, those kinds of foods actually afford to the human body. Okay, so Dr. Nesochi, um, I mean, it's still somehow like, you know, a deja vu kind of experience because when you were mm -hmm. here, we talked about all these things, it seemed very far-fetched, but now is our mm -hmm. reality. And given yes. the current population of Nigeria, right, and the, mm -hmm. the rate at which we are testing, it is nowhere mm -hmm. near what can cater to the population should there be... Um, uh, uh, like an out more like a, 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 a spread that is beyond our own capacity for testing we can't we can't handle any spread like community spreading that is already going on if it continues to um, rise and the numbers increase we cannot handle that so given that how do we as citizens start to is it self-check our immunity, what are the things that we should look out for? How do I know that I even have a strong immunity? How? Okay, so just um, in general, how to determine whether or not your immune system is strong or not. You have to know um, what your medical history is like. If you are someone obviously who is um, elderly or who has um, faced certain medical problems um, such as um, cancers, um, obviously, your immune system is compromised. If you are an individual who has a chronic medical condition, such as um, diabetes, a high blood pressure, um, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, your immune system is pretty much compromised. Okay, so in general, if you know you have those medical conditions, you are in a at risk and high risk group for having frequent infections. So that, that, but if you are somebody who thinks... Hello? Sorry, sorry? To, sorry to interrupt you. You see, in Nigeria, you are talking based on the exposure you have abroad. In Nigeria, if I have a headache, a headache means that is malaria. You understand? A headache mm. means, oh, I just need to... We do not... Self-diagnosis. Yes, we do not have that habit of going to see a doctor to conduct blood work to see, okay, this is my state. A lot of us are working corpses. We don't have mm. that culture at all. So if you say mm. medical history, how many of us in terms of percentage even I know our medical, medical history? history. We, don't, we don't know it. So maybe if mm. there are signs that I can tell whether I'm, like I was, I was uh, skipping the other day and after 300 I was panting, which I would not pant normally on a good day. So for me it mm. meant that, okay, Uwa, you, are, you are not healthy because you are not, you are not fit. So how do mm. we tell, or what are the things that we should do other than, because medical history, we don't have that in Nigeria. Just very few people. I'm talking about the larger population. 
Got it. So for the larger population, essentially, if you don't, okay, let's say you don't know your medical history. Let's say you may, you, um, you have certain medical conditions that you are unaware of. Um, there are certain things that on a day-to-day -day basis that we should all kind of focus on to try to optimize our immune system. The first pillar of um, healthy living to help boost the immune system, one thing that everyone can do is focus on getting um, adequate sleep. That's one thing that not everyone focuses on, their um, what we call sleep hygiene. Um, on a daily basis, every night, everyone to optimize their health should really be getting seven to nine hours of um, restorative, uninterrupted sleep. Hmm. So what we know about those who um, are deprived of sleep, they actually have the um, predisposition to having frequent um, infections. Their immune systems seem to not be as strong as those that actually um, get the sleep that the body actually requires. When you do get that amount of sleep, during sleep, the body actually produces a certain level of um, proteins called um, cytokines. So some of these cytokines have a have a protective effect on the um, body to help the body kind of fight off um, infection when the body is faced with infection. So the first thing I would tell anyone at all is to actually focus on your sleep hygiene, focus on getting good sleep, um, avoid being sleep deprived and try to make sure that you have a kind of um, home environment that allows you and that's conducive to um, getting restorative sleep. Okay, I, I think we, we, we I, I get that a lot because I know that when I do not sleep, I get a lot of headaches. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, I get a lot of headaches and I feel very, very tired and all of that. Yes, so yes. I, I, I totally agree with you. Now there's this thing going on in Nigeria, mask up Lagos, mm -hmm. mask up Nigeria. Do you think it's going to do anything different? Can you repeat because that? Because you're finding some type of protection. Max, maxing up, the like face your, the mask. face mask. Oh, face masks. Oh, okay. Okay. So at this point, um, the official recommendation is that we should all be wearing some kind of um, a face mask or face covering. However, we should make sure that we leave the medical grade masks to um, the health professionals, to those on the front lines. Um, those are the individuals that need most the medical grade masks, like the N95 um, masks that you hear so much about. But going out in the public in general, just to you know get your essentials, um, any face covering or face mask is helpful. And the reason being is that when we wear a face mask, if I go outside now and I wear a face mask, or you go outside now and you wear a face mask, what you're essentially doing is protecting others from the release of your um, viral particles um, that may come out of the mouth or the nose um, when you speak. You're, pr you're protecting the um, protecting everybody around you from being exposed to those um, particles. And why it's so important is um, we know that with um, COVID-19 that there there are a good amount of asymptomatic carriers. So there are people out there who are carriers of the disease that don't even know that they have it because they are not exhibiting any symptoms at all. Okay. So if you're wearing a mask, you are, and you happen to be an asymptomatic carrier, you are essentially helping limit the spread of the disease. That's why it's really important at this time that everyone wears some um, form of a face covering or a face mask when going out in public. So it is important to actually have um, that in place, that measure in place. Okay, awesome. Okay. Um, um, Dr. Nesochi, so I have a few more questions. I'm going to follow up on what you've just said, but I will take a short break. When we, take a, um, when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us.